Hey everyone, and welcome to a question to the teacher. In this series, we're going to ask and try to answer some of the questions that I wish I would have known to ask when I was starting out teaching. And here's our question for the day. Hey guys, today is May 15th, 2018. And as you can see by the carnation on my shirt, it's Teacher's Day here in Korea. And our question today has to deal with something that comes up very often with a lot of new teachers and also new parents. The question has to do with how you support your students. How do you strike the right balance between being nurturing and caring, showing your affirmation and showing your love for your students uh, with the need for instruction and discipline and organization and management? How do you walk that fine line between being someone that they love and someone that they fear? I mean, not fear, but uh, somebody that they take seriously and respect. So while I might not have all the answers, I know what works for me and what has worked for me as both a parent and as a teacher. So I'm gonna give you a few tips and as you listen, realize that you don't have to take them all. What I say is not gospel, but some of these things have been tested and they're tried and true in both my classroom and my home. So listen up and see what piques your interest. I think every one of us has run into one of these types of kids at some point in our life. Somebody who's not exactly comfortable interacting with us. And there are a few ways that we can get this person to come out of their shell, to kind of coax them into conversation, to coax them into participation. One of the ways is to show your support for what they're doing by affirming them and their worth, by creating an overtly supportive environment. I think this is especially important for us as language teachers because we are students' primary language outlet. And being supportive is perhaps the crucial foundation stone to everything else we do in class. If students feel valued and respected, this will result in good rapport. A positive classroom atmosphere will inevitably affect students' attitudes towards the work they do in class and their level of engagement with the language. One of the best ways of showing support for your students is by paying attention. Attention is one of the most powerful gifts a person can give someone else. Make eye contact. Clear your head of your own concerns, your worries, your random thoughts and distractions. Feel that all your energy is available for paying attention to the other person in a relaxed, unthreatening, supportive way. You can do this even if the other person is not speaking. And even when you're not speaking, you can show that you are there with them just in a look or a glance. And on the receiving end, people blossom in the warm glow of this attention. Humans are attention-seeking creatures, and a little drop here and there is usually enough to carry someone through an entire day. Another thing you can do is affirm and validate. Give a simple, clear, affirming comment to someone in your class. For example, tell a student something that you really like about the way they behave in class. Say it as simply and as clearly as you can. Be very concise rather than rambling at length. One short sentence is best. You could start, I really like the way... And even if you think there are some students in my class I could spend an eternity looking for good things to talk about and not find one. There's always something worthy of praise to be found. If you can't find it, stop looking for it in the student and start looking for it in the mirror. When you give positive praise, make sure that you don't use a throwaway comment because people will notice. Respond to a student's work not with general bland praise, but stating specific things you noticed about the work that they put in or the scale of their achievement. You know, you might talk about how much time you observed them spend on the task or the number of new expressions they used. You could start with something like, I noticed that you... And if you can't find some specific thing to point out, that's okay. Don't waste time with throwaway remarks. If you have nothing to praise, simply thank the student for completing the task. You know, you want to be careful that what you offer is genuine support and not simply unrealistic flattery or vague praise. Now, being positive doesn't only mean saying positive things. You can be supportive in many different ways. 
one of the things that I like to do is use people's names. And I use their native name, right? I use the name that they were given at birth. Because I always think that that's the name that makes their heart shine. So if I have a question or a comment, I'll ask, you know, what do you think, Jamin? Or how about you, Yosef? So that they know that I'm thinking about them specifically. Greetings set the tone for class. Imbue everyday greetings with genuine warmth. When students arrive at your class, say hello or welcome in a way that lets them know that you really mean it. Ask how they are. Engage in a little chit-chat. Let them know that you do care about them. That break time in between classes doesn't need to be silent, and you don't need to be sitting behind a desk. Get up, mix, mingle, and have a good time. And try to carry this attitude over into your everyday interactions with students, whether that be in the hallway, online in the cafeteria, walking outside on the track. When you see students, don't just say hello and keep going. Give them a hello and a little quick question, a little extra comment about how they look today. If you notice that they cut their hair, tell them. Point out the little things that not everybody else will. And when you do this, make eye contact. Don't avoid people's eyes. If you're low in confidence, it can be tempting to look at and talk to the room in general. On the receiving end, this will feel increasingly cold and distant. Get into regular, positive, warm, and encouraging eye contact with as many students as possible. You start with the one you like most and let it cascade from there. This eye contact will inevitably lead to smiles. You want to smile at people lots of times. These smiles will demonstrate that you enjoy being with them. Be someone who visibly enjoys what you do. Do what you might do in the company of friends. Laugh at your own silliness. <sighs> Sigh comically when you drop your pen. Use any gestures or expressions that come naturally to you. These types of real interactions where you show that you have good days and bad days, great moments and horrible moments, will also allow you to support students when you have bad news. They'll trust that just because it's bad news doesn't mean it's unbearably bad that you're going to be there to support them and that you'll work through it together. Because these bad problems aren't restricted only to the classroom. Your students are people, so you want to look outside the classroom. Show consideration for problems learners might have external to the class. Trust rather than be suspicious. So you've got to go outside of the class. You've got to support them in the halls, in the cafeteria, in the PE room, out on the soccer field, at their basketball game. You've got to find out what's going good, bad, and ugly in their life. Now, inevitably, there'll be times where you need to be supportive of your students throughout the teaching day. And you can show support to individual students in a variety of different ways. And one of my favorite ways to do this is to give private feedback. I like to write little notes on post-it papers and attach them to students' work as I give them back. Now, I don't do this to every student every day, but I try to do it to a majority of the students, a majority of the time. So there you have it. Those are just a few of my favorite ways to show support for students in my classroom. What do you do that you think students will remember you for? What do you do that shows students that you really care about them? What do you do that you think students will look back upon and say, wow, because of that, I knew my teacher cared about me. Let me know and have a happy Teacher's Day.